Yo, what's going on? It's Art back again for another episode of the Art of Combat podcast brought to you by, of course, Fansided Network. On this episode, we are talking to John McDesi, a UFC lightweight who, although has been sidelined for a little bit due to injury, is probably one of the most motivational people I've ever talked to in my entire life. Let's get to this episode with John McDessie, UFC lightweight, right here on the Art of Combat podcast, powered by Fansided MMA. What's going on? It's Art from the Art of Combat podcast, Fansided MMA, here with UFC a lightweight John McDessie. How are you, brother? Doing good. How about yourself? I'm good, man. I got to say, um, I don't know if anyone's ever told you this, but on like a side note, you have one of the most soothing voices in MMA. Like you could narrate a film about martial arts, and I think it would be perfect. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> now, and now, looking at uh, the the video behind you, you are definitely not in Canada. I'm guessing California, somewhere nice and warm. Uh, no, man, Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, Arizona. Okay, all right. Well, I was close. At least it was the West Coast. But uh, I wanted to ask you, um, how has everything been going? Obviously, you dealt with, you know, a couple of setbacks with injuries that. Looking back at how you handled those throughout the years, I admire your determination to always keep going. You're one of those fighters that it seems nothing sets you back. So I'm assuming your answer is going to be things are going well. But how has dealing with this injury been? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. It was a leg injury, right? Uh, yes, the hamstring. I torn at a full third degree torn uh, hamstring tear. Um, it's actually it's a, it's a pretty bad injury. I, I really did not know that uh, you know I didn't know how bad it was until you know uh, doing more research about it. You know it's not a common it's not a common thing. Um, the surgeon told me like in, in a whole year span he might get six patients that have a complete tear. So it's pretty unfortunate that you know I suffered another injury um, within the last year. I had four injuries in a row. It's crazy. How do you, I mean, obviously it's tough. 2020 and 2021 has been a hard year for everyone around the world because of COVID, the pandemic, you know, politics and all that. How do you stay motivated? Because I look at myself as, you know, I'm five foot eight, I'm 170 pounds. I'm trying to drop some weight and even getting up in the morning to do pushups, man. I'm like, I got to motivate myself. And I look at someone like you and I'm like, I'm a baby. <laughs> like I'm, I'm, I'm not nearly as motivated as you are. Obviously, this is embedded in your blood and your DNA, but how do you stay motivated during these tough times? I mean, yeah, of course, it's definitely been a, been a very hard, like, I, I won't lie, you know, it's been very difficult in a sense of uh, my ego, you know, my pride, uh, you know what I mean, as a, you know, I, you know, if you look, if you talk to any fighter, if you look at, you know, especially combat, you know, it's like, I feel that some more or less people they look at it as we're god gifted you know when you're born of course you have to work at it but uh, you know talent you know we all have talent we have to be aware of our talent and then we have to work hard to develop those skills and to maintain it so you know when i was born i, I was you know from an early age you know i was never scared to get hurt you know i think that's what i think that's what makes a good fighter you know the fear of not not uh, the you know not being scared to get hurt but of course we don't want to get hurt but you know uh, that being said um, motivation has to come within you and it's not easy. You know, it's actually, you know, Mike Tyson was, is one of my role models. You know, he says it's the best, you know, you, you have to kind of brainwash yourself. You know, you have to do what you hate, but you do it like you love it. And now looking at the span of your career, you are predominantly known as an incredible striker that gives him, you know, it gives a fight every single time you enter the octagon, the cage, or no matter where it is. Um, you know, what's interesting with doing some research on you and correct me if I'm wrong, you began this journey at, at six years old, correct? Yes. My older brother at that time took me to the, my first dojo at age of six. Yes. Do you remember the first time getting kicked or punched in the face? I mean, I know you were six years old, but do you remember like the first strike to your like, wow, this isn't playing with my brother. Like this is the real deal. Um, I mean, I don't really recall when I was six, to be honest. But what I do recall is I got hurt a lot. You know, I suffered a lot of, uh, you know, you get hurt. You know what I mean? That's, that's, you're in the hurting business. You know, you have uh, another student, another training partner who kicks you in the head or hits you in the, in the liver. You have your teacher who's hard on you. You know, you have your older brother who's hard on you. I feel like, I feel like that's what made me, you know, uh, just having a lot of, 
people around me who kind of, you know, but then it's up to you. either do you stay down, you know, life is going to beat you up, you know, either you kind of try to mold into it and try to take that pain and all that stuff and kind of channel it, make you stronger, or you can be like, you know what, this is not for me and let me go somewhere else. But for some weird reason, I like to get hurt. Uh, I was, I kept on, I was very attracted to the gym, um, the whole, like, I think it's more like it's a little bit of a little bit. I think as a human beings, we're all kind of a little bit self-destructive and uh, it, it all depends on which outlet you take it on. You know, So for me, I chose martial arts. You know, if I was going to destruct, if I was going to become destructive, might as well do it in a constructive way. Do you, uh, do you look at your career now and sometimes think to yourself like, man, what else would I've been doing? Like if you, if you had the chance to go back, obviously you wouldn't change a thing and you are your trials and tribulations, but if you had to to think about what you would be doing now, was there other, you know, either careers that you thought of or ideas of jobs in between them when you thought about quitting that, that you, that you like maybe in a second life or something like that or no? Oh, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I, I do many things on the side, you know, I have a lot of side hustles, you know, my whole fighting career. I always tried different things, uh, business restaurant in the restaurant business and the club business you know now i'm actually involved in uh, you know if you see clearly i'm not sure i have my own clothing brand i'm associated bullwear you know it's a good brand you know i it's all about passion it's all about uh it's all about dedication you know uh, i got also i'm also part of bull nutrition supplements you know try to live a healthy lifestyle active but to answer your question, I tried many different things and I kind of fighting kept on, you know, I was always attracted to, I think it's more of a spiritual thing than, than a physical thing. Was there something that you did, uh, you know, on the career or on the side that, that you absolutely hated to where no matter what, you would never go back to it? You're talking about like uh, another job? Yeah. Something. Yeah. Like, like on your journey through MMA, like now you're a professional fighter, obviously in the biggest organization in the world, but was there yeah. was there something that you did in between that to where you're like, man, I don't care how bad it gets, I'll never go back to that. Yes, uh, nine to five, having a boss, you know, in a sense of like having someone to kind of always uh, tell you, you know, when to come in. Like, we all have a boss. I mean, you know, Dana White is the the promoter. You know, I, there's a matchmaker. You know, I I do have people who are who are my partners who I respect, you know, I just didn't like, I can, I can never be able to be in a, in a place of like where it's, there's no progression, you know, something where just go, it's, you kind of build yourself up, you know, uh, you know, money wise, uh, career wise, I couldn't be able to be stuck on a very repetitive job where it's nine to five. I, I couldn't do that. One thing that I really appreciate about you is that uh, you post rules to success and you have the Bulls top 10 rules for success. And I wanted to ask you, this is kind of a, a two-part question. The pillow test, uh, that to me was motivational in the sense to where it says here, before drifting off to sleep, ask yourself if you've accomplished all your tasks that will get you closer to achieving your goals. Um, is that something that that has excelled you to where you're at today at the end of the day, every night before you go to bed, are you hard on yourself when you think, man, I didn't achieve this or, I, you know, didn't get that done. And is that what's motivated you to get to you to where you're at today? Yes, definitely. Um, I was very fortunate. Uh, when I was back in living in Montreal, Canada, I got associated with a, a sports psychologist named, named Brian Kane. I, I worked with him for many years. He, he was my coach. I got certified. I got I got certified under his umbrella called the 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 mental mastery performance. You know, so it's all so it's all about like reading books, looking at other successful people, observing, analyzing, learning from other people, and it's kind of like kind of you have to be hard on yourself, and you uh, and to be successful, everybody has a different definition of success. But for me, it was to to elevate myself. You know, uh, you know, financially. You know, make more money, uh, physically get better in my my skill sets, and and evolve as as a human being. So that's why I got into philosophy in my thirties. I started to, you know, I got introduced to Stoicism, and I kind of started to, you know, I started. I was very interested about philosophy because it kind of helps you mentally. Uh, it's, it's like a mental compass, you know, because if you don't really have a, a direction mentally, every nothing else is gonna follow because it's your mind, your body ha has to connect. So. It's a combination of things, you know, a lot of, a lot of hardship, a lot of, you know, a lot of trial and error, a lot of my, I did, you know, I made a lot of mistakes in my life, 
uh, you know, being an athlete and, uh, you know, being in the UFC f from the original owners, you know, I had some good fights. I didn't know, I, you know, when I was like, I had some fame, you know, stress and how to deal with that. You know, a lot of fighters don't really talk about it, but, you know, as a, it's not easy to deal with this, these pressures that uh, most athletes kind of get when they reach a certain level. So through my, you know, through my, through my years of, of growing up, you know, I, and especially like now, you know, I kind of learned how to, you know, understand myself better and how to just kind of, because uh, it's a fine line, you know what I mean? If, you over, if you're always thinking about all the things you haven't accomplished, it also can be counterproductive because now you're only thinking of the things you did not accomplish and that can put you in a, that can put you in a, in a very negative state of mind. So, you have to also be grateful of the things that you did accomplish, you know? So it's very tricky because I myself get stuck at, you know, I always wanted to be a champion. I always wanted to save my family from financial burden. I have many personal goals and personal motives that I did not accomplish completely. So that kind of puts you in a negative state, getting injured, you know, all these things that I did not expect, you know, uh, leaving Montreal, Canada because of the COVID and the lockdown. I had no opportunities there, so I had to come here to Arizona, start a new life, being far away from my family and my friends. So a lot of changes can build anxiety. So there's so many things that most people, you know, everybody, I, everybody goes through, especially now with the COVID, and there's always something new going on, and the vaccines and not being vaccinated. It's very, it's a lot of stress, you know. So. So I, the pillow test for me, it's, it's, you know, to hold yourself accountable. Yeah, no, that was a beautiful answer. And also on the top 10 rules for success you have here, listen to uplifting music. I want to know what's on your go-to playlist. Like if you've got a Spotify playlist or Apple or whatever the case may be, what music really gets you motivated and ready to tackle the day? Yeah. I mean, you know, it depends on, uh, it's like I have a wide variation of playlists. You know, I can go from the seventies. I can go actually from the fifties, your fifties, sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties, and like the modern time, you know, I have a big variation. I can go to country music. I can go listen to trance, techno, dance, rap, hip hop, R and B. It all depends on like, you know, whatever I feel in the moment, you know, um, sometimes I like to go when I'm getting ready for a fight where I'm training. Sometimes I listen to like, uplifting like happy stuff you know what i mean like you know uh, re reggae you know yeah. bob, Mar bob marley like some things like that or I, and then i'll go to a different spectrum and go to a very dark place and i'll listen to like uh, metallica rock uh you know tupac biggie so it, it all depends you know it's it's, it's as a <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing right you're, you're you know what i mean we're all very different people <laughs> Uh, one last one for you here, and then I'll I'll let you go. You you mentioned in an interview one time that you think that it's for the best to keep MMA traditional, and that means you know putting your all out there when you're in the octagon or the cage, uh, doing your part to push as hard as you can to not let it go to decision. Um, I feel as though, and I've been a longtime fan of not only the UFC but MMA in general, but I feel as though we're entering a point now where things are getting a little circusy, and when I see you know fights like you know, Jake Paul talking about coming to the UFC or you see boxers that want to come to MMA. Um, I see someone as you as a traditionalist, as someone who, you know, uh, you make weight, you get in, you go fight. Um, how do you feel about, you know, not only, not only the whole Jake Paul situation, but also, you know, when you look at fights like the just announced, you know, of course it's a massive fight between Colby Covington and Jorge Masvidal, but it's a non-title fight and it's headlining. And it seems now more than ever, money fights are almost just as important, if not more important uh, to some fans than the typical title fights of the ranked fights. What are your thoughts on that? Yes. I mean, there's, there's a fine line. Um, you know, there's a, obviously there's an evolution, right? The only reason why I said like, like what I, I thought it was better to have, a, like there's a reason why there's a promoter. There's a reason why there's a manager and just matchmaker, you know, they know why, doesn't do all the, doesn't do everything, you know, there's employees in the UFC, right? So, and as a fighter, I'm just saying, my thing was like, why do you have a train? Why do you have a coach and team and manager all in there if, if they're not going to do their job? What's the point of having them? If I'm going to play the role of the fighter, the promoter, the trainer, all that stuff, you know, then, then I'm going to eliminate 
all these people that I have and just just do it myself. Uh, I respect the fighters who are able to talk, you know, who are able to sell tickets, you know, like that's something of me, that's something of mine that I've been trying to work, you know, but then, but also I'm just trying to protect the fighters who aren't outspoken, the fighters who are introverts, you know, in a sense where they keep it to themselves. They like to kind of, they like to train. They like to go home, spend time with their families, try to learn new skills, you know, try to try to live a, a good balanced life versus, you know, being obsessed with, you know, training and then try to sell a fight. Then I'm just trying to, it's, it's all about like, you know, it all depends, you know, like, like everyone has their strengths and everybody has their weakness, you know. My strength, I'm not going to trash talk. I'm not, you know, I mean, that's not, I wasn't raised, I wasn't raised in a family of trash talking. I had to keep my mouth shut. If I open my mouth on the dinner table, my mother would slap me in the mouth. My father, you know what I mean? You get disciplined, you know, traditional martial arts, you, you bow down to the sense, the teacher, you show respect to your student, uh, to, your, to your peers. You know, it's more like a respectful thing, you know? So I was raised in that. And mixed martial arts is kind of uh, free for all. You know, everybody kind of, you go, to, you go to any big gym, you know, there's no structure. You kind of just like go in there, couple of techniques and then you beat the shit of each other there's mm -hmm. no no real like coaching where they, they correct you and they stop you it's not supervised there's no supervision so it, you get injured because you're, you're just trying to like we don't get like we don't get paid to we don't get paid to train i'm in the gym i'm being very relaxed but the other guy maybe he's not relaxed maybe he's like oh shit i gotta go hard and i'm like okay i'm just gonna go easy so i don't want to get injured being very playful. So it's very hard because it's like, where is it? It's a fine line. It's very, it's complex, you know? So some guys, they go hard. Some guys want to beat the shit out of each other. Some guys want to go to a gym, just get a good workout, you know, be smart, intelligent. Like I'm at a point in my career where I just want to try to be smart, uh, stay healthy for the fight. I had a big fight, Nazareth. I really wanted to fight this guy. He was an ex training, uh, an ex training partner. We, we were scheduled to fight. I was very excited to fight this guy. Now he's fighting uh, Bobby Green. He's another good fighter, you know, like Bobby Green and all these strikers in the UFC. You know, the, the top ten, top fifteen in the lightweight division. You know, uh, I would love to fight them. I, I just keep getting these injuries. You know, it's unfortunate. Now, uh, I was going to ask you about that, too, with the plans for 2022. And I know that there was rumors of the Nazareth fight. Do you see that fight ever happening? And also, uh, do you see yourself, obviously, back in the octagon? And if so, when? Yes, uh, these are good questions. I mean, the, the Nazareth fight in the future, I would, I would love to. I would love uh, if the opportunity presents itself. I would take it in a heartbeat uh, for the surgery. You know, it's tough because it's a hamstring. It's it's not easy. You know, it's one of those weird, like awkward positions. They cut me, they kind of slice me, like right up, right right at the bikini line. You know, it's just like it's very uncomfortable. I have to like you know just trying to find a, a comfortable position and stuff. Uh, you know, the swelling, the soreness for for the bone and the muscle to heal. It takes time. You know, ligaments, tendons, you know, ACLs, you know, shoulder repairs, all these like, uh, these things take time to heal. So I'm not really sure. I just try to take it day by day. Well, hopefully we'll be seeing you in the octagon when you're ready. I think the the worst mistake that fighters can make too is getting into the octagon uh, when it's way too early to do so, which leads to more injuries and more, uh, you know, setbacks. So take your time wishing you the best. I got to say, this was a, a motivational podcast, man. This has got me wanting to get up and make something, you know, with the day tomorrow. So I'm going to do that pillow test tonight, John, I appreciate your time and wishing you the uh, best in 2020, my friend. Thank you, my man. Have a good day, brother. That wraps up another episode of the Art of Combat podcast. A big shout-out to John McDesi. Big shout-out to Amy from Fanside and MMA as well for getting things all arranged for that interview. I love you, Amy. You're great. You are a warrior. Keep grinding. And uh, we'll be back, of course, to cover UFC Vegas 46 because, woo, fights are back, baby. I'm so excited. Giga versus Calvin Cater. That is going to be a barn burner. And uh, the fights that are being announced, too, just insane. We're going to cover that later and next week when we recap UFC Vegas 46. Pray to the MMA gods that COVID doesn't take away any of the fights. But, of course, I probably jinxed it. I know a couple of the fights on the card have already been you know, canceled or removed uh, due to COVID. 
I can't wait to return to quote unquote normal. Hey, if you haven't yet, follow me on Twitter at Art of Combat Pod. Make sure that you click like and subscribe. I always sound like one of those douchey YouTube guys, like, like and subscribe my channel and click the bell. But it really does help. And if you get some extra time, leaving a review would be amazing. This is the Art of Combat Podcast on the fan side at MMA Network. See ya!